Hey there, today's Vendex market report. I'm doing it from the road. I'm in Houston, Texas today and was yesterday. So I'm not in the studio, got to get back tonight late and then run to the studio for the morning, do the show. Had a lot going on since the auction on Wednesday, but um, bottom line, the market is the same this week as it was last week for the most part. Um, if I'm going to elaborate, I think the high lines have come down a tick, the uh, 100,000 plus stuff. Finally, just a little bit, just not a lot, but just a little bit, but that's how it starts. Maybe that interest rate is finally showing up in that market just a little bit because Christmas time is pretty good for the Highline business, but maybe we're up against the line where the Christmas inventory is over and they've got the cars that they're going to sell and they're not, that their attention is on selling uh, big stuff before the end of the year instead of acquiring more unless it's too cheap. And maybe that's what we were seeing in the lanes. <clears throat> we had like 1100, um, numbered for this week's sale and only wound up running like 780 because we had a lot of pulls. The reason we had a lot of pulls is because of recon and recon is real. And when you get into one strike market like we're in right now, you really need to do a lot of recon. It's a pain. And you guys that are in the, in the trade know exactly what I'm talking about because we were getting away without doing it. You were, I was, everybody was. So it sped the machine up. Parts are tough, vendors are tough, mechanics are real tough. Body shop's not so bad, but damn, mech work is tough and it's slowing down the process. So um, our lag of inventory versus what's online to be sold, uh, I'm seeing the spread, the Delta there show up like it used to be because we are back in old times, old rules apply. Big miles, uh, big money is cheaper. Next to new cars, next to new, next to new, 23s, 24s. They're terrible. Um, MMR is 51 grand. You better buy it for 45. You know, if you're going to make a dollar on it as a wholesaler, because it's bringing 46, 47 or 45 again. And that's just the way it is. Who is going to be able to keep up with the inventory loads of all the new car dealers? I can't. You can't. There's no source. There's different places to look and get feels. And you can look at day's supply on different makes and models, but um, it's tough. You know, Ford Dooley's that are new are still good. That truck's still a sticker truck. Dodge Dooley's are not. Dodge products in general. I mean, you got to understand these prices went up on these cars. The new car MSRP, especially in Stellantis, I still call it Chrysler, but uh, in some cases, 50%. So these 15 grand off, 10 grand off, 20 grand off, 25 grand off, off these $80,000 trucks is really not a big deal because it's back to where the MSRP, no, it's still higher than what the MSRP used to be. There's still some more coming down to be the Nissans and the Chryslers. They build too much. They always have. I talked about it last week and that's always going to be the case. Uh, the Germans are starting to show up. The lease returns are starting to come back in where people aren't picking them off. The dealers aren't grabbing every lease return for posted price anymore. Like they were again, old rules apply. So, you know, 23s are not bringing MMR. 20, twos are not bringing MMR, but they're getting a hell of a lot closer to it. 24s, there is no MMR. And when you look at MSRP, you better know what the rebates are and know what the supply is because any minute they, they're gonna announce another five or 10 grand off MSRP because the supply's up. GM put a stop sale on trucks because the roofs are blowing off of them on 2024s. Uh, seriously, look it up. They, they just did it yesterday. And that could firm up that GM market a little bit, but you won't see it immediately. You'll see it if that, if that stop sale lasts. They'll, they'll need to sell down before you'll see it matriculate into the used car market. So loading up on 2024, 2023 GM trucks because they put a stop sale in 2024 is not a good idea. Uh, it could be if this is a long drawn out ordeal, but it won't be net yet. Market doesn't move that fast unless there's a immediate inventory supply disruption. So um, I'm seeing the uh, corporate note operators get back in the game pretty heavy. They're, but you know, you can use drive time as an example. They're a great baseline for marketplace. And you, you see them getting knocked off 2,000, 1,500, 14,000 forever. People would bid up to where the drive time stopped and then that was the end of it. But now you're seeing four people come in over, over them. If drive time stopped bidding at 12 grand on an escape, you're seeing guys come in, four more guys come in and run that car $2,000 more. So drive time's gonna have to adjust their pricing. Carvana has been bidding um, a little more aggressively later than l lately in the lanes than I can recall. 
<clears throat> but the note dealers are thinking about the proverbial tax time. It is that time of year. Uh, we're coming up into Christmas, but I feel pretty good about the market. To tell you the truth, it's not as bad. This fall readjustment marketplace was not as bad as what I anticipated. I was expecting a bigger hit to the gut because we overswelled so much, so many index points, Vindex points, that uh, I, I thought that it would come down even further than it has. And the talk of interest rates coming down in the first quarter of 2024 has moved Wall Street. It's going to move the car market. It's going to give us more confidence that our customers can afford this stuff. These junks that we move up and down the road, you know, it's our place to do it and we must keep up with it. And the people who really drive the market are the customers, right? What they want, what they can afford, what they'll do. That's what lets you and me know what to pay for X, Y, and Z. Um, high mileage, Aston Martin, Maseratis, Italians, Britons, whatever, high dollars. I mean, old rules apply. Just keep saying that because it's just true. Super desirable is great. I sold a Urus back, a new Urus with 800 miles, 400 miles back of MSRP this week. I haven't done that in three years. We handled a lot of Lamborghini rolls, all that stuff. A lot of you guys uh, dial into 20 and watch that. But, you know, so that, that lets you know that the, the things are changing a little bit. It's not a disaster at all. Um, and it may just jump right back up. You never know. I remember year before, year summer before last, when we went into the meltdown, the last week of July, the price adjustment, uh, it had it headed down hard, man. Highline came down hard, everything came down hard, and then it jetted back up and took off huge. So, is that going to happen again? No, I don't believe so. I didn't think that was going to happen last time, but we kind of smelled a trickle of it. We kind of had in our heart that we might get into a fall run in 2022 and it recovered and it did. It recovered fully actually back to that crazy COVID market. But that's not where we're at today. The chips are out, the cars are out, the things are getting built. Um, I'd say parts are a bigger problem than anything we have, getting parts on stuff. I went over to a build shop today to check on some projects we have with some classics, you know, Mopar parts. They're, they're having problems getting parts. It's not easy to build these cars. And you guys are thinking about what to do with your classics for the spring. Are you gonna send them to Barrett Scottsdale? Are you gonna send them to Meekum K Kissimmee? Are you going to wait for the spring spring? Um, I'm doing the same thing. I'm trying to figure out what to do right now. I'm talking to both those companies and um, thinking about maybe doing a auction at Dallas. Uh, if they'll let me run a public auction for this Alabama barn find. I've got about 50 good classics lined up. I'm trying to figure out what to do because I want to keep buying. And when I've got 50, in a barn, I'm full. And you know what full is? When you're full, you don't buy. I mean, that's a different part of our business than the norm. But we did have an 800 mile, um, what was it, an 800 mile, I'm drawing a blank, GTO, orange stick. Uh, we sold it to Dallas on Wednesday and it brought the moon plus. I mean, it was wonderful. You know, mid thirties. Hell, it might have brought upper thirties, it was good. Um, and we had a couple other classics in there that, that were just okay. They kind of flat, but they weren't special. So it's just like, whatever, big trucks, big miles. You know, if you see those landscaper rigs with, with 200,000 miles and an 04 on them, you know, six liter, they're, they're worth two grand again. And they're not 10. And these consumers rolling in with these, I know what I got trucks, the hard ass Oklahomans, you know, let them go be hard ass somewhere else. Cause I ain't paying it. And you're not either. So uh, we just, just bid the cars how, for what they're worth. They're, they're, they're coming back to what they're worth within your thoughts and what, you know, your, uh, your good senses tell you. But they're still higher than that if they're good. But that's always been the case. I mean, you can't pay too much for a good one. You can't buy the wrong one cheap enough. Um, Carfax is real. I think it's just an excuse, but that's fine. The excuse is real. I don't think the customers are beating up on you that much. And with the rates of where they are, a lot of this stuff's going into Specialify anyway. And nobody gives a shit about Carfax and that's, unless it's a blown bag or something. Um, I mean, that's a whole different animal. But I'll tell you one thing I really see different between auctions is the structural calls. Structural calls drive me crazy when they're bullshit. Because when you call a car frame, you're really tearing it to pieces. And if it's framed for a bullshit reason, it's just, it just seems, uh, I wish the AAA would get together 
and really get this down right because I, I see different opinions on what is frame versus what not is frame across the country and zones heavier. And um, it's funny, California dealers are, the, the frame cars bring more, the frame car call, the frame cars that are called frame, that are good cars do bring more out there because the LA market is used to that being over described, but it still bastardizes the Carfax in the auto check. So uh, lifts on, on trucks, structural alteration, I think that word is important versus structural damage. Structural damage is a wreck. Structural alteration is a mod. And I'd like to see some consistency in that announcement. And Carfax can't carry that consistency over. So when they see that it's a big lifted truck, it says structural alteration. Well, yeah, they drilled some bolts in the frame to get those extra set of shocks or the springs and what they did. They didn't screw it up. The truck hadn't been run over by Cincinnati Freight. It's just been altered because it's a mod. It's a badass mod. And you need to add for it, not hurt it. Uh, soft top Jeeps suck. Um, I just wanted to throw that out there. But that's been the case forever until COVID. They still sucked versus the hard tops, but right now they're really sucking. But, uh, you know, stick shift soft top unlimited that costs $38,000. You're going to lose money on that rig unless you buy it cheaper. It's just the way it's going to work. And, um, old rules apply. That's my message for today. I hope that helps. Sorry I'm in a hurry, but I'm sitting in a parking lot and I have another buyer to go see down here in Houston. We have a ton of business in Houston. Houston is where I cut my teeth in, you know, 25 years ago. Um, buying cars at CarMax, actually. Hell, it was 28 years ago. So it's really been nice to spend a couple days down here. And I did the radio show yesterday on 97.5 ESPN with Granado and those guys. I've been on that station for 15 years doing this show. And, you know, I used to do it for Texas Direct a long time ago. And it's nice to be back in the studio with them and have a lot of buyers, a lot of vendors, a lot of suppliers down here, uh, media contacts. And I have been booked balls to the wall for the past two days, seeing people I haven't seen forever. And it's funny, just surprising them and pop it in. Like, dude, where have you been? I'm here, Houston, Texas, going to California next. See you on the radio in the morning. Remember, John Clay Wolf Show, 8 a.m. Central. You can get it at jcwshow.com. It is not very car related. It's more TNA and rock and roll, grab ass fun. Um, you know, I listened to Stern growing up. So if I was going to blame it on somebody, I'd call it a Howard Sterny kind of show. But I've been doing that show for my kid is 17 years old. I've been doing that show for 17 and a half years every single Saturday morning, except we'll miss about one every Saturday. We are going to run a replay between Christmas and New Year's this year, but we hit all uh, 51 weeks of live four hour, five hour shows uh, this year on the radio. Remember jcwshow.com if you're looking for some really bad humor, slap ass uh, cartoons for adult entertainment on Saturday mornings, we'll be there. And see you in the lanes. We will be locked and loaded next Wednesday morning. 930 shotgun start Dallas, Texas. And then the LA lane starts up two hours later, a lane 13 in Mannheim, California. Thanks.